In today's bang for your buck battle, we're taking a $425,000 housing budget and seeing what that looks like in Staten Island, New York versus Charlotte, North Carolina. So let the battle begin. So let's just jump straight into our first challenger today. And that is a home in one of the five boroughs of New York City, Staten Island. Now Staten Island is about 25 miles from Manhattan and it's the only borough that doesn't have a subway connection into Manhattan. So if you're gonna go into the city, you have about an hour drive from there. And for our North Carolina challenger, I chose a home in one of the northwestern suburbs of Charlotte, Mountain Island Lake, about 15 miles from downtown Charlotte. So enough talking about where they are, let's just jump into round one, the stats on each house, the tail of the tape. Our first challenger, our Staten Island home, we have the following stats. It's being offered for $424,999. It has three bedrooms and one bathroom. And it comes in at 996 square feet. And it was built in 1925. That brings in its per square foot price to $427, which is actually a tad higher than the Staten Island average of $403 per square foot. And for our second challenger, our Mountain Island Lake home in Charlotte, it's being offered for $423,000. It has two bedrooms and two baths, and it comes in at 1,890 square feet. And it was built in this century in 2000. There's also an HOE fee of $350 per month, and that brings in its per square foot price to $225 per square foot. The This one is actually a little bit above the Charlotte area average of $224 a square foot. So just on paper, on the stats alone, it sure seems like our Charlotte house is taking the lead. But the stats and the numbers aren't everything. Let's just jump into round two, the exterior and curb appeal. So for our Staten Island house, although really small, I mean, look at how wide it is. It looks more like a, a cottage. But even with that, it's super cute with that brick and wood shingle sidling. It exudes a lot of charm. There's a ton of greenery and trees. I mean, really mature landscaping, which I guess for an almost 100 year old house you would expect. And one thing that is nice is that there's a decent sized backyard. Now, the landscaping in the back is a little more on the natural side, but it definitely gives you the room and space for, you, for your dog or a place for the kids to play. I mean, besides the size, it's a pretty solid exterior. Now for our Charlotte home. It's got some great curb appeal with all of that stonework about the exterior. I mean, it's gorgeous. It's just a gorgeous home to drive up to. And even some of the elements like the big windows with the arch tops, it's still very inviting. And since you're in the South, you know that greenery and big trees is going to be a thing. And this house doesn't disappoint. But for my money, I think the highlight is what's in back of the house. When you look out your back window or sitting on your patio and you see that amazing water feature, that pond back there, I mean, that's pretty sick. I know, look, I could sit out there and just enjoy that view and let it wash away whatever stress is going on in my life. So for aesthetics and curb appeal, each house has some great features, and I guess it just depends on what you're looking for. But for me, I'm going to have to give this round to our Charlotte house as well. So let's just jump into round number three, the kitchens. And in our Staten Island house, like you'll see in this and the following rounds, this house starts to show its age. Granted, the kitchen has all the essentials, but first of all, it's tiny. There's a little place to eat. The cabinetry looks like it's been updated within maybe the past 20 years, but the appliances, they're all about the same age. Now, don't get me wrong, it's clean, it's functional for a couple of people, but it just looks, I don't know, it looks tired to me. And on top of that, there is that wallpaper. It pollutes just about every room in this house. It's just clear that this house, although workable, just needs to have someone come in and give it a complete update. Look, I'm not scared of the sub 1,000 square foot. I mean, look what amazing things people are doing with things like tiny houses. But this house, 
This house, I don't know, it just is, like I said, tired. Now, jumping over to our Charlotte house, and the first thing you notice is just the size difference. There's actually room for more than one person to be in the kitchen. And while the kitchen is definitely passable for a home at this budget, it's a little underwhelming. I mean, everything looks pretty basic. Like they check the boxes for design and space elements, but there's not that pizzazz or it factor. It's just a pretty nice tracked home kitchen. Nothing great, nothing glaringly wrong, just nice. A little meh. So while neither home really steals the show with their kitchens, I'm still definitely going to have to give this round to our Charlotte house. You've got the room, you've got the basics in there. Now, if you bring in your flair, I think you can turn this kitchen into something pretty spectacular. Now, at this point, it definitely looks like our Charlotte home is way ahead in the battle. But hold on, there's a couple more rounds to go to see if our Staten Island house can pull it out. But let's jump into round four, the primary bedrooms and bathrooms and the rest of the interior. Now the interior of our Staten Island house is quaint. I mean, it has some charm, but like we discussed when we looked at the kitchen, it's a little bit dated. It is definitely wallpaper palooza in here. It looks like every wall has been covered with what was probably, when it was originally done, fashionable wallpaper, but that's been a while. On top of that, there is one, one bathroom in the entire house. So not really fair to highlight that, but looking at the rest of it, the bedrooms are very basic. There's a lot of interesting colored carpeting throughout. It's a hundred years old and under a thousand square feet. Like I said, it's quaint with charm, but it looks like there hasn't been an update since the 50s or 60s. There's a lot of opportunity to come in here and do a complete remodel and make it something great for the area. But for 420 something thousand dollars, jumping to our Charlotte home, you can immediately see how homes have changed over the last 100 years. Starting with the primary bedroom and bathroom, they're nicely done. I mean, nothing over the top, but all of the standards you would expect in a home built in around 2008. The bedroom has ample size, nice modern carpeting, a ceiling fan, and nice and bright inside. The bathroom has dual vanities, and look at how long that framed mirror is with the nice sconces. It's got a nice shower with built-in seating and a really spacious closet. Now they could probably upgrade the storage in the closet, but at least you have the room to do so. In the rest of the house, you can see that it's really nicely done. In the rest of the house, you can see that it's really nicely done. The rooms are well roomy, which you would guess would be the case with uh, more than double the square footage or just about double the square footage. They've got multiple sittings area. I mean, it's a nice, comfortable home. Nothing over the top, but nothing to sneeze at either. You bring in your touch to this home and it is the blank slate that you need to make it absolutely perfect. And again, I've got to give this round to our Charlotte home as well. But it's not over. We've got one final round to see if Staten Island can make its mark. And that is round five, the other notable features of the homes and the neighborhoods. And in our Staten Island house, the biggest bonus is that you are in one of the boroughs of New York City. And although there is no subway access to the city, you're just 25 miles or so from a night out, and everything that Manhattan has to offer. In addition, Staten Island is a great, tight-knit community. And if you're looking for that community feel and you want or need to live in the New York area, this could be a fantastic option. Now for our Charlotte home, this home has some really standout features. There's a community pool, so you'll have a great place to go and cool off during the summer. It's an HOA community, so you know what you're getting for neighborhood and how consistent your neighborhood is going to be. You're not gonna end up with a big blue house right next to you. On top of that, just look again at that beautiful pond outside. I mean, that is amazing. Something that will just make coming home absolutely worth it. And for those reasons, this one also has to go to our Charlotte house. So where are we at? Well, our tail of the tape, our stats winner, Charlotte takes the round. Our curb appeal winner, Charlotte. Kitchen winner, Charlotte. Interior winner, 
Charlotte. And again, for other notable features, Charlotte. And that makes it a unanimous decision that our Charlotte, North Carolina is today's bang for your buck battle champion. Can you see yourself living in one of these two challengers? Let me know in the comments below and make sure to hit that pretty picture of me that should be on the screen now to subscribe and see the next battle. I'm also putting up a couple of videos that I think you should also check out. And of course, if you're looking to relocate in the next nine to 90 days, anywhere in the country, make sure to get a hold of me and get a proven champ in your corner. Then just go to therelocationking.com and let's talk. That's it for today. The Relocation King out.